Hey guys, so for today's video I'm going to be doing another episode of A Safe Place. If you are not familiar with this, I will link my other episodes on it below in my uh, mental health and well-being playlist. But essentially you can write in any of your current like issues or things you're dealing with if you just want to like bounce them off someone. And then also in the comments below people can kind of leave their input, things they might have experienced that were similar. I figured it was just a nice way to kind of talk things through among friends. I do check the comments just to make sure no one's leaving anything like mean or things that could be like taken the wrong way if someone is in kind of a difficult spot at that moment in their life. So please do try and keep it um, understanding and sympathetic and let's have a look at some of your messages. So if at any point you do want to comment on any of these things with your input, just reference the number on the screen. So start your comment with the number of the person you want to leave the message for and then it's kind of easier for them to find it. So number one says, I know I want to have kids someday and raise them vegan. My parents are not and I'm terrified of families sabotaging me or friends. Also, I'm scared that they will grow up to be a meat eater or hurt animals and then I'm contributing to the problem. Also, I'm not sure I want kids because the world is fucked up with how we treat other people and animals so much suffering in the world how can i bring someone in a world with so much hate disgust and suffering well, i would think from your message that possibly right now is not the best time to have kids if you are seemingly very unsure as to whether you want to and i mean that's okay too if you are having like family watch your kids if you do decide to have kids at some point you'll just have to kind of lay out exactly what they can and can't have and say like these are your wishes please respect them past that i don't know what more you can really do in that situation obviously as you raise your kids explain to them why you choose the diet that you do but again i mean as with anything you can't necessarily like stop your kids from trying things you know i was raised vegetarian for most of my life vegetarian and then vegan i mean our parents explained to us why our diet was the way it was i think i have maybe like tried tiny bits of certain meats but never like eaten a whole meal of it or like bought it or like wanted to have a full meal of meat so i think it's the same with anything and i'm not likening diet to drugs but in this situation where you feel like how do i stop my kid from doing that thing i don't want them to do it's the same with drugs all you can do is explain to them you know maybe the dangers or the reasons why you maybe shouldn't or should be careful and then you just have to hope that you've raised them to use their better judgment i mean from your message and obviously that is just a short message it seems to me like you're very unsure right now whether you want to have kids or not and i think that that's okay i know people will bring up like your ticking body clock or whatever but if you are that unsure then maybe kids aren't for you I don't know. I think that's something that you obviously need to think about and decide with your person or however you're going to go about that. And I mean, as far as things being too fucked up in the world to have kids, well, that's also another thing that you're going to have to think about and decide if you want to bring them into this world or not. I mean, there's also a lot of really great things. I don't know that that's necessarily something I can give a ton of input on, but that's kind of my initial thoughts, I guess. So hopefully that was in some way helpful. Um, and of course, that was person number one. Person number two says, I am a healthcare professional and I work with cancer patients in management and administration of their chemotherapy. I've been vegan for one year and my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. She is on therapy and has had surgery. It's not genetic and it is estrogen driven. Um, she has complained again and again that she doesn't know what to do nutritionally to help aid in her cancer coming back. I tried giving her education materials on how a plant-based diet and there was even a breast cancer survivor doing plant-based presentations and cooking. She refuses to let me help her. I am, she refuses to let me help her. I am deeply saddened to watch people every day dying from these terrible diseases as I watch the healthcare system push animal protein. It saddens me to watch people dying on the front lines and the healthcare system fail everyone. When I show studies to people I care about, they just say, nope, that isn't true. Sometimes I feel like I'm carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders, watching people killing themselves because of tradition and watching the animals die needlessly. I volunteer to help homeless animals and I see pig roasts to raise money and the disconnect shakes me. I'm sure this is a common issue with most vegans and meditation has helped me. I still have moments two to three times a month where I'm really sad and sometimes I feel selfish when I'm happy because I know animals... Wait, what? I still have moments two to three times a month where I'm really sad and sometimes I feel selfish when I'm happy because I know animals and people are dying. Okay, you feel selfish that you're happy when there are animals and people dying. You're not feeling selfish 
that you're happy animals and people are dying. I think that's it. I wish I could change the world. I know that this is my calling and that I can help people see what I see and change, but no outlet has called to me yet. More of a rant than anything else. Love your videos. Yeah, I mean, it's a tough, shitty situation. I think all you can do is give the information to people who are interested. They might take it, they might not, but that's, you know, up to them to decide. I could definitely see that would be tough with your mum not listening, because obviously you have concerns other than just the animals there. You obviously want like your mom to be healthy and not have cancer come back. I do know my mom told me about a book that I think was maybe written by a cancer doctor who also had breast cancer. Maybe it's like the Bristol Cancer Diet or something like that. If I can find the book, I'll link it below. Like you said, you've already shown her educational stuff, so maybe she won't be interested, but just like books on it. Um, Maybe things like the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, there might be some interesting articles there. But yeah, I mean, like you said, that's less of a question, more of a rant. I mean, I think you just gotta keep on doing what you're doing. Practice some self-care so that you don't get too overwhelmed by it. And this is the world that we're in, unfortunately, and all we can do is do our best. And like you said, you feel like this is your calling. So hopefully you can, you know, focus on the good things that you are able to do, yeah. Number three says, over the summer I had to stop being friends with my best friend of roughly all four years of high school. The friendship just wasn't really working out. I always felt like she was constantly throwing me under the bus to make her life easier and generally just not really caring about my feelings towards things in our friendship. I'm fine and I feel a lot better now that we aren't friends anymore, but now I don't have any friends at all. I have one friend where I work, but we really don't talk much outside of that. It really sucks not having anyone to talk to or hang out with. I don't know if you've ever been in a similar situation, but it would really really help if you had any insight at all that you could give me. I know I probably sound like a big crybaby and there are people with worse problems than me to reach out to you but it would really mean a lot if you could give me any advice. Thank you for just taking the time to read. I mean some people have tons of friends, some people just have a few close friends, some people prefer to not really have any friends but I think it's important to like check in on yourself and think about if you are do you want to have more friends? And if you do, then, you know, do more things to maybe meet more people, take some exercise classes, be open to it, maybe see if your friend from work wants to go out. You know, just say yes to things and try and put yourself in situations to meet more people. I know when I moved here from the UK it was really difficult because obviously I didn't know anyone really but then also we were in a tiny town where everybody already knew Adam so then it was like everyone was already Adam's friend you know so when I finally started doing things like um like saying yes to people when they asked me to do things or you know going and taking exercise classes and stuff like that I think then you do meet a lot more people and just being open-minded to it really I guess but hopefully that helps in some way is this number four I'll put the number on the screen. Okay, they say, hi, I need help with moving on past infidelity. About one year ago, my fiance sat me down and confessed to cheating on me a few years earlier. My world was completely shattered and it took me a long time to accept what happened. The reality that I was left with was not the dickhead boyfriend taking advantage of me, but my best friend telling me he had made an awful mistake that he could never take back. A few weeks before his confession, we had a fight over something else and the fallout was the importance of honesty in our relationship. There's no way that I would have ever found out. So him telling me I believe is an attempt to grow. I can barely remember the first few months after I found out I was in so much pain and it's all a blur. We nearly broke up one night and I just couldn't go through with it because he was so devastated and helpless to change what he'd done. I know that infidelity is much more common than we all want to believe and also that people make mistakes so I decided to try to forgive him. Fast forward to today and things have improved a lot but I still feel broken. I know where I want to be but I can't get there. How do you truly let go of something that hurts so deeply? I feel like I'm just slowly forgetting about it, but then what's the point of being told and going through all that pain in the first place? How do I stop the pain from defining me and our relationship? I'm really sorry that you had to go through that and that is shitty. I mean, I would say, first of all, make sure that you want to remain in the relationship for your reasons, you know, not just his, because I know you said you couldn't go through with leaving him because he was having a hard time or whatever. You know, make sure that you're staying in that relationship because you want to. I think what's difficult when there's been infidelity and you decide to try and work through things is that, and maybe you're not doing this, but I think in your head you think, I want things to be like they were before, but I don't think that's ever going to be the case. So I think you need to kind of like redefine your relationship and move on because it's never going to be like it was before like you said you've been through that like trauma of being told that and it's horrible and you feel awful and you're obviously a very empathetic person because you're also feeling the discomfort from his side too so I think and again you might not be doing this but try not to focus on how things were and getting back to how they were but maybe just like make them good now you said that 
you feel like you're slowly forgetting about it, but then what's the point of being told? I, mean, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. If he really does seem like he's super sorry about it and he's trying to make things better, you know, I don't think that you necessarily need to hold on to that pain and like focus on it more. I mean, you've probably already felt a lot of pain. I really think just make it something new, you know, make it your relationship now. Don't try and make it the relationship it was. Yeah, I mean, it's a horrible, horrible situation and you're right, lots of people have been through it and don't talk about it. And you said it was a year ago. So, I mean, I think the fact that you're feeling like you're forgetting about it over time isn't necessarily a bad thing. Like, maybe you're not forgetting about it, you're just getting on with life, you know? And I think if you are going to commit to staying with that person, then moving on from it is ultimately what you want to do, right? I mean, yeah, maybe it's not that you're forgetting about it, but that you're just moving on and I think that is kind of the goal. Hopefully your fiance learned from it and hasn't done anything else to, you know, hurt you in any way since then. Yeah, I just think focus on the now, make things good now. I think also when there's been like someone cheating, there's this pressure on like the cheaty that they need to make that person pay and that they can't forgive them too quickly and that, you know, all of these things that you're meant to do. And I think that you need to like check in with yourself and think about like, how do I feel about this? What do I need to be able to move on? Is this person doing those things that I need them to do to enable me to forgive them and move on from it? I don't think there's really any way that I can necessarily help that situation as much as I would like to. But I mean, I think just like talking to one another, go to some couples counseling, you know, like I think that that's always helpful. I think everybody could probably use a little bit of that. And yeah, just checking in with yourself really. I hope that helps in some way. Um, the next one reads, you had a good call not going with the hormonal birth control shot. I've always been able to control my anxiety, but a month or so after the shot, it's been a nightmare to handle. I'm really lucky to have a boyfriend that supports me so much through this strange time. I can't say it's been easy on both of us with this, and I wanted to know if you have any tips on dealing with anxiety. It feels like someone is tightly gripping my body, causing me to feel like my chest is heavy and that it feels like my body is physically bruised. My symptoms heighten when I have caffeine to the point of my arms and legs are numb on rare cases. So I wanted to know what kind of books, remedies or tasks to do when I feel it coming on. I'm getting a to-do list so I can physically check off all the work I'm doing for school and make the project seem small. I also have a somewhat of a combative home life, not physical, just words, mainly random things, but lately it's been about me trying to switch over to being vegan. And because I eat pizza one day out with my family just to not be a bother, to then go to the store myself and get everything vegan every time I get but you're not vegan. It's very difficult and hard on me because when I'm out and my family or friends are sharing or splitting something with everyone, I don't want to be that person and force everyone into having to eat what only I want to eat. So I guess I have a lot of things, lol, sorry this is long. Also my boyfriend knows about this and thinks that not forcing everyone and being flexible in this situation like this, meaning like that is meeting in the middle since I just pick off the meat and just be a vegetarian for a meal. Anyways, I don't know a simple and quick way to explain to my family that will stop the mocking and rude exchanges. Thank you so much again and I'm sorry for how long this was. I absolutely love your YouTube and your Instagram. I'm also getting a journal now, lol. My panicky attack went away after typing this. It's amazing how powerful the mind is. I'm not sure like how long ago you had the shot. There might be some way your doctor can help with that or things they can suggest, especially if you think it is due to the hormonal birth control shot that you had. Like I said, I will link my kind of health and well-being playlist below if you do want to check it out. I do have some like tips and things like that in there for like self-care and kind of things I do when I'm anxious. And I also have book recommendations on that playlist too. So I think everything that you've asked for should be in there. As for the vegan thing, I don't know if it would help with things with your family, but I mean, you don't have to say that you're vegan. Like, you can just say, I don't want to eat that. I mean, you're the one making the choices about your diet, you know? I don't really see why they find it fun to, like, mock that or try and be snippy about it, you know? So I think just say, like, this is what I'm eating. That's it. Also, I don't think you necessarily need to feel like you have to pick meat off things, you know? I mean, you're obviously then doing it because you don't want to ingest the meat, but the meat is still being bought. So, I mean, if you don't want to do that, then you can just say, like, I'm going to get a salad and this thing. You can share it with me if you want to. Don't, if you don't, you know? I mean, I think there's, like, a bigger picture than just not wanting to be an inconvenience. But I also know that family things are weird and, like, you know, 
shit sometimes. So I think you need to like think about what you really want to do in that situation with the vegan thing and like do are you happy to get the meat option just to be make it easier on them or do you want to just order something else because if that is the case then I think you need to try and find a way that you can firmly say that to them and just be like this is what I'm getting. I don't eat meat. I mean, I, I'm i also not a really great person to talk to about this stuff because I was lucky enough to have a, a vegan or vegetarian family so they kind of understand and would never act like that. But uh, I know, it's shitty and weird and family stuff is weird and uncomfortable and I don't know. I think you need to think about what you want to do for you in that situation and stick to it. So yeah, I would say for your anxiety, I do have a lot of recommendations in my um, the playlist, so I will link that below. I would check in with your doctor just to make sure there's nothing they can do to help either way. And then with the family stuff, I think just like be sure of what you want to do in that situation and just tell them if they want to argue about it or pick on the fact that you're not vegan or are vegan or whatever, then that's their problem. They can have that conversation with themselves. The next one reads... Within the past year, I am reconnected with an ex-boyfriend of two years and I am feeling better than ever about our relationship. We had lived together in the past and had to move back in with our families, which put a huge burden on our relationship, so we called it quits. Now that we are back living together, I have found that I have lost my best friend. While she is building her own small family, her daughter just turned one this past month, she still got mad at me for spending time with my own family, my boyfriend and his young daughter. I enjoy hanging around at home and with all of my knickknacks around me, cozying up on the couch and watching our TV show, I also enjoy going to the movies or dinner. Spending time with my mom is also important to me, as well as working a full-time job. I guess I am just upset that my best friend of almost 10 years has deleted me out of her life. She unfriended me on Facebook and hasn't tried to talk to me in almost a month. I know that friendship goes two ways, but when I saw that she deleted me, it kind of hurt my feelings, and I honestly didn't know what to say. I didn't attend her baby's first birthday party because I've always been expected to do more things for her than I can mentally and financially afford. I threw her a baby shower and also spent hundreds of dollars on a past wedding. While I love her and clearly that's why I did what I did in the past, I guess I'm sick of feeling like I'm expected to be there and do all of these things when she can so easily delete me from her life. Any suggestions on if she is worth my time or not? Is it okay to be friendless and still feel happy because I kind of do? Uh, I don't, I mean I don't think there's any way me or anyone else can say if she's worth your time or not like I mean I think that's probably for you and your friend to really decide but without having talked about it that's going to be kind of hard to figure out I would guess I mean you both obviously have things going on in your life so that is probably why things have been busy and you've maybe not spoken to one another the whole unfriending you on Facebook thing I know that can be like hurtful but also like people read into things differently you know and maybe she thought that I don't know. I don't know why she unfriended you on Facebook, but really without asking her, you will never know either. So I would maybe just try and have a conversation with her, just send her a text and be like, hey, you know, maybe just checking in to see if you're okay, if you need anything and see how it goes from there. But also if you're happy with not having her in your life, then like, that's okay too, you know? I don't know. It's a weird situation and, you know, well, I think we've all been in similar situations at one point or another, but without having a conversation with her, I don't think that there's any way anybody could kind of, you know, give you advice. You know, maybe she has things that she feels weren't great about your friendship as well, and, you know, that's fine. Everybody reads into things differently. I would maybe just mm, try and have a little conversation with her, see how it goes. Maybe it will be that she's, like, embarrassed that she unfriended you. Like, you don't know. There's no way I can know. There's no way anybody else can know until you have that conversation. So I think, I mean, if you really feel happy without her in your life, that's fine. But if you are curious about it, try and strike up a conversation. That's what I would say. I hope that helps in some way. So I think I'm going to leave it at that for this video. You guys do um, definitely seem to enjoy these videos and I do love seeing all of your input as well. So nice to have like a group of people who can sympathize with one another and like offer advice and not judge. So I really do appreciate that and that is a really nice thing about doing this series. I will put a link to the Google Doc that you can leave your own kind of concerns or like things you're struggling with. Um, in there if you want me to address them on the next video, which I will try and do in a couple weeks I'll also leave some links to some kind of counseling and things like that that might be helpful as well as my playlist on kind of mental health and well-being as well So hopefully this video was in some way helpful Please do leave your advice below start your comment with the number of the person if you do enjoy this series Please do give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video. Bye What do you want booper? Come here Sweetie peachy.
And if you just need general advice on how to feel better, if you have a pet, give him a little, give him a little snug, you know? Or go to the Humane Society and um, walk some dogs or cuddle some cats. Let's go.